What is more important, to tell a loving lie or a brutal truth? I had that dilemma 25 years ago. I lied to my father at his deathbed and my guilty feelings have followed me for many years. A month before my father passed away, I visited him in Puerto Rico. Before seeing him, I talked to my mother. My mother told me, sorry to tell you, but his cancer has metastasized and the doctor says that there's nothing, nothing else to do just to keep him comfortable. And then she added, and nobody's telling him that he's dying. Not knowing will give him hope. I hesitated, but I agreed. When I went to my father's bedside and he saw me, he flashed this big smile. It was like sunshine in a dark place. And just for a moment, I turned into this four-year-old girl running toward his arms after a hard day's work. But this time, I was holding his fragile body while we both cried of happiness. We had a short conversation and he fell asleep. And I thought, how lucky am I to have this remarkable man as my father. But he wasn't so remarkable before he had kids. See, my mother's family didn't like him at all. Why? He was an alcoholic. He was a heavy smoker, had a third grade education. He was 15 years older than my mom and he was a ladies' man. But he insisted that he was interested only in my mother and he wanted to marry her. My mom was so in love with him that the family decided to let him get married. They were afraid that my mom would get pregnant out of wedlock and we know that that was a big no-no at that time. A year after the wedding, I was born, and my mother gifted me a precious story about my birth. She said that when I was born, my father was overwhelmed with joy, and he held me in his arms and said, I will never drink or smoke again. He said that in front of the whole family. And he quit cold turkey that day. I didn't know my father smoked or drink. The problem was that since he didn't smoke or drink, he had to channel that energy somehow. So he had six more children with my mother. After spending two weeks with my father in Puerto Rico, it was time for me to come back to California. Once again, my mom told me, don't tell him that you're leaving tonight for California. That will crush him. Again, I hesitated, but I agreed. And I knew that that was going to be the last time I would see my father alive. So. I had to tell him how I felt because we never talk about feelings. While holding his hand, I told him, Papi, you know, you're a great father. You and mommy have devoted your life to us. Thanks to your example, none of us drink or smoke. We have an education. We have families of our own and we're good people. We're hardworking people. And you know, you know that I love you, right? He looked at me 
and said, but why are you telling me this? Am I dying? And I told him lie number one. No, 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 papi, what are you talking about? You're not dying. You're fine. You'll be fine. Then he asked me, so are you going back to California now? And I told him lie number two. No, no, not yet. His last words to me were, que Dios te bendiga, hija mía. Nos vemos mañana. God bless you, my child. See you tomorrow. And I left that evening. Two weeks later, he passed away. For many years, my guilty feelings became a burden. I would picture my father asking me, why did you lie to me twice at my deathbed? You know, I don't like liars. But while writing this story and reflecting about his life, I realized that my father was a loving and a kind man. He was very forgiving. He would have never said those horrible words that were in my nightmares. Instead, he would have said, Lydia, I forgave you right away. I know you did it out of love. And you know that I love you too, right? That imaginary conversation with my father has given me the peace I needed just by shifting the way I was thinking. Just by having a different perspective that allowed me to believe that my father forgave me and then, and only then, I was able to forgive myself. My father, my father was a remarkable man to the end.